Hello everybody. It's Amanda from the Little Bluebird Gallery and I want to chat with you a little bit today about a subject that I asked about, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday here on my Facebook page. I just asked the question, when it comes to creating original artwork, what is your biggest hurdle? What is the the main thing that is is kind of like your block or what is keeping you from being able to do that. And I got lots and lots and lots of <laughs> of comments, which was great and surprising and um, well, not really surprising because I know this is something that is kind of a problem area for a lot of us. And a few years ago, I would have loved for somebody to show me how to do what um, what my teachers were telling me I needed to do, but they weren't really telling me how to do it. So let me explain. A lot of times you'll take a class, let's say it's a step-by-step -step lesson, and when you are going through the class and you're learning something and you're copying exactly what the teacher is telling you to do, and then you get to the end of the course or the class or whatever, most art teachers, most of them that I've learned from anyway, will say, now take this information and make it your own. Or use the techniques that you've learned in these classes and create something that is unique and original and beautiful and just yours. But they don't really tell you how to do that. So I know that this can be something that is a little bit scary and it shouldn't be. So first of all, what I'm going to do is we're going to go down this list of things that people said here on the Facebook page when I asked this question. So I asked, what is your, your block, your problem area? And these are some of the things that they said. Finding inspiration, a fear of lack of perfection. So if you're a perfectionist, then you may have this fear of not getting it right. Uh, putting down that first shape. Will I actually like what I paint? Is this even art? Every subject has been done before. Moving ideas from my mind onto my canvas is really hard. Uh, is it wrong to look at photos for ideas? Um, let's see. I'm too picky and I'm not loose enough with my strokes. I have trouble finding the right colors. I'm not sure about composition and layout. Background colors are a problem for me. And several people just said, I don't even know where to start. So since this seems to be um, an issue, then I wanna be helpful. I wanna do what I can to try to help you guys. So what we're gonna do, hi Mary and Natalie, I'm glad you're here. We're going to take just a few of these, maybe one a day for several days, and I'm going to give you some tips and some ideas and some help with some of these problem areas. Okay, so today what we're going to talk about is the comment that every subject has been done before. Okay, while that may be true, nothing is really 100% original. There's really, there's nothing that you can paint that is going to be 100% original. And that is because everybody has pretty much been copying each other, been copying what they see around them, shapes, general shapes, um, things in nature, colors. None of those things are going to change and become something completely different. So if you're if you're an artist and you're painting anything at all, then you're probably using the same colors that every other artist is using or has ever used in the past. You're probably going to be painting some of the same shapes that all artists have ever been painting. So when when we use the term original, I don't want you to get so caught up in thinking 
I have to make something that nobody has ever seen anything like before in the history of the world. That's not, you don't need to put that much pressure on yourself. So I'm going to give you a few ideas and, um, and see if this helps with this topic. So first of all, like I said, nothing is completely original. And even if you are painting flowers and every other artist in the world was painting flowers, your flowers are still going to be a little bit different from everybody else's. If you are using your own likes, your own ideas, maybe even pulling from the flowers that are native to your area, wherever you live in the world, maybe the flowers that are in your own backyard, or the flowers that, that you like the best, then you are the thing that makes it different. Okay, and this, this really is going to, um, it's going to be like a thread that goes throughout your entire art career is that you are what makes your art original. Okay, so let's go back to the subject that everything has already been done before. Think about, for example, all of the different choices that there are in something that has nothing to do with art. Let me think of something like potato chips. Okay, there are lots and lots and lots of varieties of potato chips, but you're, you're not going to go in a store and look and say, why did these people make barbecue potato chips when all of these other companies are already making these same chips? Are they all going to be exactly the same? No. Are they all making the same type of product? Yes, but this bag of barbecue potato chips, this is a weird, <laughs> this is a weird example, but this bag is going to be a little bit different from every other kind that has made, been made. And it's because a person created it. That unique person, they decided what kind of potatoes they wanted to use. They decided what kind of seasoning they wanted to use. And while they're still potato chips and they are still barbecue, they are still a little bit different from all the other barbecue potato chips. So the same thing happens with art. Even though somebody has already been painting flowers, somebody has already used acrylics and mixed it with paper and created some kind of unique and different look or People have been painting with oil paints for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Um, you and your unique ideas, your unique experience, your own um, you being you is what will make your art original. So don't be afraid to paint something that you've seen somewhere else. When, when you see something that makes you get excited about trying to paint something, do it. It's not going to be illegal for you to go in a home decor store and see that lemons are really popular. And that is something that is happy and fun and you like the colors. And you see all of these cute little reeds everywhere that have lemons on them. So you decide you want to go home and you want to try to paint some lemons. There's nothing wrong with that. That is still original art. Something that originates in your idea, in your mind, that you take your own two hands and you put down using whatever medium you decide to use is original art. When it's not original is when you take a step-by-step -step lesson or if someone, let's not even go there. Let's say someone goes to a museum and they see an original painting by a famous artist, let's say Picasso, and then they copy the Picasso and then they take that copy, 
Maybe they're really, really good at copying, and it looks exactly like the Picasso. And they sign their name at the bottom, and then they present that to the world as if they came up with that idea. That's when it becomes a problem. <laughs> It's not a problem if you go to the museum and you look at all of the different Picassos that are there and then you decide, I really like the way that he did this or the way that he did that, but I want to use these colors, one, two, three, four different colors, because they are more beautiful to me. And I also like the way that this certain artist added in some other element uh, maybe some ink, or they liked adding paper collage. So I'm going to pull from all of these different ideas and come up with something that may have been inspired by a Picasso, but I'm not going to take that one painting, copy it exactly the way he did it, and then put it out into the world as if I created it in my own mind. Does that make sense? So, abstract work. Realism, Impressionism, all of those things are, um, are like a different brand of barbecue potato chips. <laughs> we go back to the example that I had to begin with. So um, it, it bothers me that everyone seems so uh, uptight and scared. Saying there, that you're afraid to do something that is creative is going to keep you from doing anything creative at all. So getting past some of these blocks that you have is going to free up some creativity in your mind. And you're gonna you're gonna feel more like, okay, I can I can do this and not feel guilty about it, if that makes sense. So I would say when when someone uses the uh, I'm gonna say the excuse that every subject has already done, been done before and there's nothing original that I can create, that's just the way it's gonna be. And so you can't really use that as an excuse. Um, see my lemons here? This idea came from this idea, which came from another tutorial that I painted about three years ago when I painted some just some cute little potted plants in the creative community that was one of our tutorials and then this month we're going to use that same tutorial as a jumping off point but we're going to paint this and do you know where I came up with this idea I just googled um, what did I google topiary potted plants and I looked at all of the different photos that popped up in all of the different home decor and decided I saw one that was similar to that in, it was similar to this in shape at the top, but I changed it and made it a concrete flower pot. And the one that I saw had flowers on it, but I changed it and made it lemons because I was interested in the lemons. So then I had the idea to create some lemons for you guys. And that is in a, a, a video that I did last week here on my Facebook page, if you want to go back and watch that. But coming up with original ideas that is not something that someone else has already done is impossible <laughs> because it's, it's just not possible. There's going to be someone who has painted a lemon before in the past. I'm sure there are people who have painted lemon topiaries in the past. There are probably a lot of artists that are painting this, this subject right now because it is just popular in home decor. But that doesn't mean that you can't do it. What you have to do is take something that you are inspired by. Someone said that the lemons inspired them. Well, they did me too, apparently, because I've been painting lemons lately. But um, take something that sparks some sort of excitement or happiness or creative, uh, whatever you want to call it, and then run with it. 
try it a bunch of different ways. So for example, if you are interested in learning more about painting lemons, you can try my tutorial and do it with the palette knife. Or you can use a brush if you'd rather use a brush and paint one with a brush. Make it into a bowl full of lemons. Um, paint an actual lemon tree. There are just lots and lots of ideas that you can pull from one subject. So even though that subject may have been done in the past, that does not mean that you can't make something that is original and unique to you from those ideas. Does that make sense? Okay, let's see what you guys are saying here. Um, great topic, Kathy says. Art is evolving constantly. Yes, that is another thing. Um, even though every subject may have been done before, you haven't done every subject, right? I mean, well, I guess you could have, but it's not very likely. And you can change what you're doing. I, my way of painting has evolved and changed, and I'm constantly learning new things and trying new things. And if you, if you will allow yourself not to be afraid to try new things, then you're going to really move forward more quickly. Um, let's see. Natalie says she's glad I addressed this. I'm glad that it's helpful. Uh, Marianne says, thank you for clarity. You're very welcome, Nita. Holly says, why am I suddenly feeling hungry? <laughs> uh, my potato chips. I'm hungry too. That's probably why I came up with that example. Uh, Lori says, will you be doing one like the peony you just posted a few days ago? Um, I don't remember what I posted a few days ago, but um, let me see. I've got a lesson on my website. That's another thing that we can talk about is that when you're taking classes from someone else and they're teaching you something that's step by step, you can do that. And then once you get the hang of it, start adding in some things of your own, some ideas or some colors or a different medium and mix it up and make it. Make it something that is, is original to you by changing the colors, by changing the way that it's um, positioned. I mean, there's lots of different ways that you can, can change something up just enough that it makes it original. Let me see if I can get this link for you and see if this may be what you were looking for. Um, I do have a little video workshop where I teach how to paint a loose peony or peony, however you say it, where you're from. So I'll get that link for you real quick. But originality, um, let me do this before I keep talking. I'm going to try to try to reply with that. And we'll see. Lori, I hope that replied to you. Okay. Um, Mary says, you do you. Yes, that's exactly Exactly right. And Holly said, this is exactly what I needed to hear right now. Thank you so much for what you do. Uh, you're very welcome. Um, especially in my creative community, this is something that we work on on a regular basis. And I know that it's different from what a lot of people are teaching in like their membership groups. A lot of people 
focus more on step-by-step -step lessons where I do have lots of step-by-step -step lessons, especially in my creative community. But I also try to help you to, to move past that so that you're not dependent on that for creating something that's beautiful. So on my, uh, my description page of the creative community, I have a little paragraph there that says, why focus on originality? And I talk about how many groups and classes focus on the step-by-step -step lessons, but I try to push you a little bit more and encourage you to find some originality. And that is, I've got four reasons listed here why I do that. Number one is because it's the most rewarding art that you can make. When you create something from your own ideas, it's so much more fun. And you have... Um, you just have this sense of pride when you do that. I mean, when you first begin and you're doing things step by step, you are going to be proud of the things that you create, but it's even it's amplified even more when you're creating things that you came up with on your own and they turn out really well. So, number 2 is you're never going to know what you can do until you try. You may be able to create something that is unbelievable, but if you just hold on to taking other people's work and, and creating it, and you never step outside of your comfort zone and try, you're not gonna know what you can do. Okay, number three is, I was once where you are right now, if this is the way you feel, and I would have loved for someone to help me with this and tell me, you know, you this is how you do it. It's okay to do this. It's not okay to do that. Um, here's where you pull from, here are, what are your likes and your dislikes? That kind of thing. So I would have loved to have someone to, to just walk me through some of those ideas back then. And number four, if you are ever interested in selling your work, originality is very important. And when you find your authentic style, when it, and it's going to change a little bit. It's not going to be like you're going to start painting something a certain way and never change for the rest of your life. But you're going to get comfortable with making things a certain way and your own unique ways will turn into something that's different because you are a unique and different person. We're all different. And when you start doing that, then you're going to attract the the perfect collectors of your work. People are going to be they're going to be drawn to what you're making because Number one, you're going to be really excited about it and you're going to show your excitement when you share it with other people. And um, it's, it's going to be good work because if you're making things that are coming from your heart and your own mind and your own ideas and they are beautifully you, then you're going to attract people who will want to buy what you're making. So. I hope that that was helpful in some way to someone, especially whoever it was that said that every subject has been done before, which is true. And that's why nothing is 100% original. We're all re-evaluating, um, looking at things, changing things. Artists are always growing and we are always looking for inspiration from other places and um, it's okay to do that it's okay to pull ideas from other artists from your own environment from your past from your likes and your dislikes from your emotions from all of the places in your own little world that make you who you are you can pull ideas in and make original art so uh, Nita says the biggest compliment that she gets is that her paintings are from her heart. Yes, and that is, people can see it, they can sense it, and if you are not, if you're not, I'm trying to think of a good example. It's kind of like when people do cover songs, you know what I mean? Um, there's a difference in going and hearing the original artist in concert singing 
a song that they wrote or going and hearing a cover band singing the same song and they may do an amazing job but it's still not the person that it should be <laughs> you know and um even if you didn't know the original artist you could probably still tell that this is a cover band i'm not saying that the cover bands are bad do you know what i mean though <laughs> so don't be like a cover band don't go and try to um use someone else's ideas and and put it out there as yours use their ideas and be inspired by it but create things that are just you and yours and you're going to see a huge difference in every way when you can do that and when you allow yourself to do that so topic number one for today and i'm going to go over some more of these over the next week or so but this first one that every subject has done, been done before. Nope, can't use that as your excuse. You haven't done every subject that there is before. So, do you guys have any other questions about this topic? I'm glad that you guys are, are getting encouraged by this and feel like this was something that was helpful to you. You're welcome, Sue. And, if there's a topic that you would like for me to cover, then put it here in the comments or ask me now and maybe it's something that may go along with the same same thing. But some of the some of the problems that people are are saying they kind of go together, like um, color choices and choosing the right background color. Um, those two are similar. Let's see, what was another one? Perfectionism or being too picky, not being loose enough with, with whatever it is that you're trying to paint. Those kind of go together. And so finding inspiration and this idea that every subject has been done before, those two things kind of go together too. But there's more that I could talk about with the finding inspiration part. So we may go over that um, in another video. But making original artwork is not exactly what you might think that it is. So it's not, it's not that you've got to make something that no one has ever seen before. It's more like you've got to make your artwork. And when you do that, when you give yourself permission, to paint something that's going to just come out kind of naturally in your own way and you allow yourself to do that without trying to do it exactly like someone else that is when you are creating original artwork so another example of this might be that there is a step-by-step -step tutorial painting a rose and four different people paint that lesson and all four of them have a little bit of a different look that happens all the time in my my painting classes when people several different people may paint the same tutorial and they all may have a little something different in each one well that little something different is is going to be amplified if you allow it and you you run with it so let's say Jan's bird looks a little, a little bold. There's a little bit of a line around the outside edge that looks different from Karen's bird, who, which is very, um, let's say that the edges of it may be a little bit smeared and look a little bit uh, foggy, for lack of a better word. So they may have both painted the same bird and and not intentionally done these things but when they can recognize that difference and and allow themselves to do that more 
do that thing more often, then that is when your own ideas, your own style is going to to come together, if that makes any sense. Okay, let's see what you guys are saying here. Beth says, yes, when I hear someone singing someone else's song, if they put their own spin on it, I enjoy it. If they just try to sound like the original artist, they're just not going to live up to it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, with cherries on top designs. I'm sorry, I don't know what your name is, but that's your business page. Um, would help to ask what people want to see in a painting and start there. I think if I knew what people wanted to see, but from my perspective, that could inspire me. Well, that's another whole topic. Uh, well, let's move down. Kimberly says it's an original interpretation. That's a good way to put it. Okay, but let's go back to this other topic here. That if you know what people want your painting to look like, then you can try to do that. Mm -mm. That's backwards. Because... That is going to put so much pressure on you, so much stress, that it's going to take every ounce of energy that you have to try to do that thing, whatever it may be. It may be that you're not good at doing whatever it is that you think other people want it to look like. So I know that there is, especially when you're selling your work, there is a little bit of an overlap between what is trendy and popular and what you're good at, what you really like to do. So that's another thing that I've taught before in another lesson. Um, but if you go into trying to be creative with the mindset that I'm painting this because so-and-so wants me to paint this, then that's not going to be something that you're gonna be able to do for a long period of time. It's super stressful. That's one reason why painting commission work is really hard to do. Um, a lot of artists do it, but I guarantee that the majority of them do not enjoy it at all. So, um, and that's what happens. When, when you're doing a commission piece and you're working on it, and you, you think you're doing a really great job, and then you show it to your client, and they say, well, I don't really like this part. I don't really like that part. Can you change this and that and make it look different? You may be able to try to change some of those things, but you're never going to know what they have in their mind that they think it's supposed to look like. It's, it's an impossible task. <laughs> it is completely impossible for you to take a subject that someone has in mind and create it in a way that they think it should be created. So what you have to do is you have to flip it. You don't need to try to create things that you think people will like. You create things that you like and the people that are your customers will be drawn to that. So otherwise you're going to be very, very stressed out and it will probably cause creative block and you're not going to enjoy creating anymore if you have to try to work like that. Okay, your name's Amy. Great. Um, Rhonda says, paint what you see, anything that inspires. Yes. You can't see what someone else sees in their mind. Exactly, Leah. And Rhonda says, she paints what she sees in nature. Yeah, that's a great a great tool and Brenda says thank you I'm glad this was helpful and like I said we're going to go over several of these problems that you guys have have brought up especially on the post that I posted yesterday here on the Facebook page there may be some new ones that pop up um but I want to be helpful if I can uh, Amy says that makes so much sense thank you I just need to be more confident in what I do. Yes, and that is another key. When, when you're making things that you love and you share that with other people, your confidence in what you're making is going to, to show 
as well as the happiness that you're feeling while you're making it. Um, Rhonda says, I hate commissions. I know I do too. Um, and I think every artist does, but sometimes we have to do that to make a living. But anyway, uh, Jennifer says, that's why we call it art. Yes. So there are some, there are some people who have jobs. There are lots and lots of different kinds of artists too, which is another topic that we could talk about. There are lots of different kinds of artists. And if you, if your job is to create artwork that the majority of people in the world will like, something that is trending right now, something that would be like on a tablecloth that would sell really well in a home decor store, then you are going to have to have some pressure on yourself to create things that you think people will like. But if you're just getting started, you don't really know what you like to do. You don't really have your own style, your own signature look, your own way of doing things. Then begin painting things that you like. And like I said, when you're making things that you're proud of, that you like, that you would hang in your own home, then your collectors, the people that will buy what you're making, will be drawn to that. And um, unless you are in some sort of career where you have to make things that will sell, then just don't do that. And especially don't allow other people to dictate what you are making if you don't have to. So that's my soapbox. <laughs> Creativity and originality are, those are my things. I want to help as much as I can. And um, in my creative community, this is where we have been headed for the past couple of years. When I first began that group, I was just sharing the step-by-step -step lessons. And they're all still there. But in the past year, maybe the past two years, I've been just um, gently nudging my members to begin trying something a little bit different, not depending on my step-by-step -step lesson so much. And, um, and I think that it's, it's beneficial to everyone involved. Okay. I'm glad you found it helpful, Leah. Rhonda said, I like to do the exact same painting in different mediums like palette knife and mixed media or watercolor, and it helps me be more creative. Yes, that is a great way to experiment like that. Okay, so I hope this was helpful to you all. Oh, Leah says, I've done two commissions. One I did, what she asked, and also my own vision. She chose mine. The other, it took three times before she liked it. Yeah, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> and I will give you this little tip. If you're doing commissions, you need to give them a certain amount, a certain number that they can come back and change things. So like you may say, I had to learn this the hard way. But you may say, okay, I will show you halfway through the painting and we'll decide if I'm going the right direction. So you show it and they may tweak something or want to change something. And then you can show them once you finish that. So that would be two times that they've given their input. If, if three times is too much for you, then you need to charge and say um, the first three Deviations from what I have created are at no cost, but any additional changes that need to be made after the third change will cost so and so many dollars. And you just tag on a price that will make it worth it to you. Otherwise, you may have a stroke. <laughs> so I'm just saying, if you are doing commissions, that is probably the hardest work that I've ever done. Um, so if, if that is the way that you are trying to make a living right now, it is hard. So don't let people take advantage of you and don't change it 
too many times without getting compensated for all of that work and time. Because if you paint something and you have to go back over it again and change everything, I mean, you can give them a certain number of times that they can tweak it. But if they are really, really making it hard, then charge. Charge for the extra time. Charge for the extra paint. Charge for your own sanity because <laughs> you need to. Okay, Holly said, um, is my creative community open to new people? It is open right now. It's going to be open through February the 25th. So, uh, Rhonda says, do you get a deposit on commissions? I get a full pay up front. I don't even do deposits. I don't even do commissions right now, honestly. But um, you can start that way if you wanted to and just make you know you pay half now and you pay half when it's completed or um just go ahead and and charge the full amount and tell them you get so many changes for this amount of money and if you decide that after the third revision that you want to change something else then it's going to cost thirty dollars fifty dollars however many dollars it will make it worth it for you um, let's see if I can get that link for you real quick, Holly. I think I can. So, yes, my creative community is open. It's been open for a while now. And because of COVID and all of the craziness, I've had a lot of things out of whack in my business. I've opened things. I've made new things. I've tried different things. And um, the creative community has been open for a little while now, and um, it's going to close on the 25th. So you can come on in if you are interested today. Anybody else have any other questions on this topic? I know we kind of got off topic a little bit, but we've covered some things that I think are helpful and necessary. And we're going to do this, I'm going to try to do a live video every day for the next several days and just cover some of these topics and these problems. And so if you think of something else that you're interested in hearing my take on, then you can message me here on Facebook or you can send me an email if you want to do that. It's artbyamandahilburn at gmail.com. I'm going to go and I will see you guys next time. Bye.